So more engage uh, in the recent days, I've been seeing them in uh, a lot of uh, magic quadrant and uh, cracking this on media, right? So, like there is this constant uh, PR, meaning paying and getting some uh, uh, coverages or just announcing funding news. Uh, I saw some couple of good campaigns which uh, Mo Engage was in the news. So I'm curious to know, like, how did you crack it? What was behind it? I can share a very interesting story about the earned media bit, um, quite recent also. Um, so this was about 2020, the initial part of 2020. Um, and we had just built out our marketing plan, I think. All of us were at the same point where we just built out the plan for the rest of the year, budgets and everything was set. Uh, from content, uh, from a content perspective, we had laid out uh, the core themes we're going to go after. And uh, we had uh, we were thinking of going after something like growth marketing or growth because uh, that was the real pain point that our customers or our prospects face when they sort of uh, are in that part of the journey. They are looking at uh, how do I grow from here? How do I take that leap from say uh, one to 10? And uh, things like that so we felt uh, that would be an interesting area to cover and talk about uh, what it takes to make that journey uh, unfortunately because of covid we couldn't do that uh, because we felt it really wouldn't it wasn't the best time to talk about growth because people were really uncertain about uh, survival at that point uh, so we had to park that um, the other thing that was also in the works at the same time uh, was a, a data backed report that we're creating with aptopia now okay. uh, we were trying to produce original content for the western markets for north america to be specific at that point um, and we realized that we are not a known brand over there. We're quite nascent, uh, probably a year or two into the region. Um, not too many people knew us. Uh, so even if we were to produce a really interesting uh, data back report or some, publish some kind of benchmarks, how would people uh, even trust us? Or why would they even consume our content? Why would they download? Sure. Um, so we felt that we could work with a partner who is known in the region, who has some kind of a similar data backed presence over there who's built some kind of leadership for themselves and it would be a interesting collaboration because for them the asian market would be uh, you know quite new and we could sort of uh, complement each other so we were working with aptopia on a report on travel and hospitality nice. and uh, again we had to we felt that was not the right uh, vertical to talk about because again travel and hospitality was really uh, the worst hit during yeah. the pandemic and we felt oh let's now rethink what we're doing so what we went on to do was uh, there was a lot of uncertainty in the market and people didn't know what's happening they were oh is this happening only to my brand or is everybody getting affected what's happening globally there was all this uncertainty between that uh, march to may kind of a period uh, and we wanted to sort of uh, help people at that point with the right information so we said let's uh, work together on on a report, but let's expand the scope and let's change what we're planning earlier. So we looked at creating something which was global, which covered, I think, about 14 or 15 different verticals uh, nice. and uh, across these five, six regions that we, we operate in. And we said, let's work on building out uh, a larger report which talks about what's ha really happening around the world. What is the impact of this pandemic? Um, and uh, we, the report was called the impact of COVID-19 on businesses. And uh, primarily we focused on what are the engagement trends, how, what are the downloads, and then the DAUs and MAUs and how people, uh, you know, how is it growing for certain verticals in certain regions? And there were some contradicting data saying in certain regions, certain verticals are doing well versus uh, some places mm -hmm. it was stagnant. And uh, I mean, some, also something like a banking uh, was strangely stagnant, wasn't growing much. So there were some interesting trends that we pulled out from there. Real estate in Middle East was growing and people were like, why? Uh, there was conversations on why real estate is growing at this point. So there were these data points that we pulled out from both our uh, sides and we published this holistic report. Uh, an interesting thing we also did was we said there's a lot of data. It was, I think, a 50, 60 page a book. Uh, right. We knew that people would want things in a snapshot also. So we created like a matrix, like the Gartner magic quadrant, so to say, the quadrant. And we said uh, uh, upcoming or slowdown or growth, hyper growth, four quadrants. So these are sectors. We, these are sectors on the matrix. Sectors. Yeah, these were four, four quadrants on the matrix. And we plotted all the different uh, industries from different industries, regions right. and said, OK, this is how this is where companies are. Uh, this got a lot of a lot of organic coverage. Actually, there was a lot of social conversation uh, on LinkedIn, interestingly. Uh, and uh, as you can imagine, that uh, that quadrant itself was the center point. Everybody was nice. taking snapshots, and there was we were getting tagged, asking people were asking us, "Hey, why have you said retail is growing?" And even before we could respond, somebody else was responding, saying, "Because of these things, and you know, Middle East, these companies are doing this online engagement, so people are continuing to." go on to their apps, uh, how is uh, travel doing this? So there was a lot of conversation organically on social. Uh, what also happened, uh, again, very interesting, was uh, we got a lot of press coverage, again, earned. We did not uh, do too much of an outreach PR because we were quite, again, quite nascent on the PR side of things, if I were to say. We hadn't 
uh, got the kind of uh, setup that we have right now. Right now, we have a very, very localized PR agencies and we have a larger setup. Back then, we did not have. Uh, right. But what happened was we got a lot of media coverage. Of course, we got a lot of coverage in India and Southeast Asia. But interestingly, uh, I think these are probably you know our biggest achievements because we got covered by three uh, me- uh, media houses, which is uh, World Economic Forum and uh, the Wall Street Journal and Forbes, and purely yes. organic. We we had yes. not even it gone to. Doesn't them. get better than that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, just to break it down to the audience here, right? See, a good quant- content. Uh, the way I am looking at the whole campaign is, uh, you partnered with someone, built a trust. uh you surveyed a lot of people to get the data the brand is out there and i'm sure there is a lot of downloads you got leads through it right and then there is social media linkedin and uh, that kind of uh, engagement and finally there is earn earn media which is going to help you in uh, seo backing king uh, high domain authority what not and the word of mouth right there's also one yeah there's also like uh... creation and publication of a 50 page of book and then simplifying book. that into one quadrant exactly one yeah. good content can make a world of difference right so that's yeah. the power of content marketing uh, brilliantly executed